Good afternoon. Uh, I thank the member state of the UN Security Council, uh, especially UK as a pen holder and the United States as the presidency of the council for organizing this UNSC close meeting on Myanmar. I also thank the member states for the issuance of the, just, uh, the joint statement just, just, just read out. In their joint statement, the member state calls again for the full implementation of the resolution 2669 and reaffirmed their strong support for the people of Myanmar. I thank for that. Here I wish to stress that time is of the essence for, the, for all of us to save lives of the people of Myanmar. The military hunter continues its atrocities against the people of Myanmar even after the adoption of the resolution. On 21st December last year, the number of people killed by the hunter stood at 2,639. According to our verified data, it is already 4,000 today. So over 1,300 people were killed within past eight months. In addition, over 75,000 homes were burned down. Two million people had been displaced, and 18 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. The military hunter used fighter jets and helicopters to conduct area attacks on civilian areas. It is clear that we need to stop flows of jet fuel, M's, and money to the military hunter. My question, my question is what they are waiting for to save lives of people of Myanmar. Our, on our part, the vast majority of people of Myanmar are unified in opposition to the military dictatorship and its rule. What is happening in Myanmar is not a civil war, but a people's revolution against a violent and despotic military hunter. The people of Myanmar demand the removal of the military from politics and the establishment of a civilian federal democratic union. The military is not capable of winning its war against the people. It is not capable of governing the country or managing the economy. And it is not capable of delivering durable peace or stability. Only, only an inclusive federal democratic civilian government in Myanmar can deliver those goals. And this is exactly, exactly what the democratic forces in our country are committed to establish, to listen to the voices of the people and to respect the aspirations of the people. The UN Security Council have to take decisive actions without further delay to save lives of the people of Myanmar, to end the military impunity, and to prevent further destabilization of the region. Therefore, I wish to appeal the member states of the UN Security Council to start now a negotiation process to adopt a follow-up enforceable resolution timely. I thank you for your attention. Uh, my name is Toshi Inaba from Kyoto News of Japan. Uh, what kind of resolution are you expecting to uh, save people in Myanmar? What could be the most effective way to address the, this issue? Thanks. Thank you so much. As I mentioned in my, 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 my remarks, so we need to stop flows of M's, uh, jet fuel, and then financial flow to the military. That kind of resolution we'd like to see from the UN Security Council. Mr. Ambassador, um, the military leaders in Myanmar have ignored every resolution. They've ignored um, all of the points basically that ASEAN has put forward. So what makes you think that a resolution from the Security Council would make any difference? 
Yeah, I, I believe that the resolution from the Security Council, I mean the enforceable resolution from the Security Council, will make a lot of changes because it is legally binding that uh, the member state should abide by the resolution. That is what we are looking forward. Thank you. Ambassador, which particular countries on the Security Council have the power to stop the flow of weapons into the Myanmar? Um, I don't want to specify uh, explicitly. Of course, all the member states are the responsible to protect the people, to save lives of the people of Myanmar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.